Last week I built this vertical takeoff and landing radio control plane. However, that was the easy part. This week we're going to have to go through the mixing and the gyro stabilisation which will assist this plane to fly. But first, let's go through the controls for the plane. So when the aircraft is in horizontal flight, the motors will be angled horizontally and we have the main controls of a regular aircraft. The elevator controls the pitch, the ailerons control the roll and the differential thrust of the motors control the yaw of the aircraft, as well as providing thrust. But when the plane is in a hover, the motors are mounted vertically and a few of the controls have been swapped. This now means that the differential thrust of the motors now causes the aircraft to roll instead of yaw therefore requiring an aileron input instead of a rudder input. The tilt of the motors will now be used to control the pitch axis by utilising a bicopter style of control, which I've previously explained in my bicopter Chinook video, which I'll link in the description below. The physical elevator still controls the pitch and the ailerons still control the roll, but these are almost obsolete if the aircraft is at zero airspeed because they work by deflecting the oncoming air. Also, I mentioned in my last video that this aircraft wouldn't have thrust vectored yaw control when hovering but instead a physical rudder control surface. Well, I ended up removing that because there wasn't enough space in the fuselage for the secondary servo and all the other electronics. So I'm going to assume it'll just have to weather vane into the wind. Now with my old radio controlled VTOLs, I ran a flight controller called a KK2 board and it ran a firmware called Open Aero VTOL. Now this firmware was written by a few guys over on a forum called RC Groups and it's a really well documented firmware. They've written a nice manual and it's probably the easiest solution to building your own vertical takeoff and landing radio control planes. However, the KK2 board has been sold at fewer and fewer places at the moment, and for some reason I can't seem to be able to flash any firmwares on my new Windows 10 PC. So I've decided to build my own flight controller, I guess you could call it. Basically, write a lot of Arduino code to try and get some VTOL mixes working. Because why not try and make life a bit more difficult than it should be? So let's dive into it. Here is a plane built and visibly ready to fly. It just needs a brain. So here is a flight controller designed to be used for drones and fixed wing aircraft. However, it isn't VTOL capable yet because radio controlled VTOLs aren't as popular as they should be. Here is an Arduino Leonardo Micro Pro which uses the 32U4 based processor which allows 5 interrupt pins for the 5 control inputs. And finally a receiver, specifically the FR Sky L9R receiver because it can output S bus signal and individual servo signals simultaneously. This is important because the majority of flight controllers nowadays only allow S-Bus or PPM inputs, which essentially allows only one wire to connect the two together. I flashed the flight controller with iNav firmware, which allowed me to output just the basic stabilised roll, pitch and yaw, which I then wired into the Arduino. I then wired the throttle and auxiliary channel for tilt control directly from the receiver to the Arduino. If I've already lost you, then I apologise. However, I also don't recommend you building this plane if these buzzwords don't make sense. Either way, I'll try to explain the Arduino code as best as I can for you coding guys. So hang in there. First off, the libraries must be included for reading the input signals and then sending new signals to the motors and tilt servo. Next, all the variables that are used in the code are listed and then the inputs and outputs are listed with the input pins being allocated to a specific channel number. The next part runs the void setup code, which runs only once when the Arduino is turned on. This allocates the outputs to the specified numbered pins on the Arduino, which are then connected to two speed controllers and the tilt servo. Scrolling down, we can see the void loop code, which is the main code that runs when the aircraft is flying. It starts off by reading the PWM signals at the inputs, which stands for pulse width modulation, and is essentially a digital pulse that is high for 1000 to 2000 microseconds therefore given a value in the range of 1000 to 2000. This means the midpoint of the control is 1500 and for an example, full left aileron would be about 1000 and full right aileron would be about 2000. This means that centered aileron stick would be about 1500. However, to carry out the maths required for mixing these channels together, I had to subtract 1500 from each value so that the new range is negative 500 to positive 500 and the midpoint is now zero. Oh, and this if statement is there because if the receiver is unplugged, the Arduino automatically puts the throttle to 100%. But don't ask me how I found that out. Anyway, the next stage is to calculate the transitional fades, which are important for the gradual swapping of channels between flight modes. This relates to what I explained earlier, where the differential thrust of the motors in a hover will control the roll, but in horizontal flight will control the yaw. Therefore, when transitioning the aircraft from a hover to horizontal flight, the Arduino needs to fade the aileron control out and fade the rudder control in. 
This is done by changing the range of the tilt channel to be between 0 and 1. Then the specified control input is multiplied by either this value or the inverse of this value depending on which flight mode it needs to be enabled for. For example, in a hover, say that this value is 1, therefore the aileron value multiplied by 1 enables full aileron control. Then when the plane transitions to horizontal flight, this value is now 0, therefore removing aileron control. And this also allows proportional aileron fade throughout the transition. And the inverse of this is done with the rudder. The next step is to take these fade values and mix them with the throttle. Let's take the left motor throttle setting as an example. The main component will be the throttle input value, then the aileron is added and the rudder is subtracted, both being multiplied by 0.2 so they only affect the throttle by 20% of their full value. The additions and subtractions in this equation are to do with the direction at which the control variable affects the aircraft. So subtracting the aileron will reverse its control and adding the rudder will also reverse its control. Now the 1500 is added to the end to bring the range of the output back up to be between 1000 and 2000, so it's readable by the speed controller for the motor. So let's say the throttle is at 0% and the control sticks are centred. That would mean that the throttle is at negative 500 and the aileron and rudder are at 0, therefore giving an output of 1000, which on the 1000 to 2000 scale means it's at 0% throttle. Okay, now let's say we give an input of 20% throttle and 20% right aileron. This would change the throttle value to minus 300 and the aileron value to 200, therefore giving a final output of 1240, which is essentially 24% throttle, slightly over the 20% input throttle setting because it needs the extra 4% thrust to roll the aircraft to the right. Now, because the rudder was multiplied by the inverse of the tilt value to the aileron in the previous code calculation, it is therefore multiplied by zero in this calculation and has no effect on the throttle during a hover. Anyone confused yet? Well, the rest of the code is just limiting the outputs to the 1000-2000 range and writing them to the output bits. So let's go back to the hardware. I decided to control the control surfaces directly from the receiver, which meant they weren't stabilized by the flight controller but also meant that in the event of an error in the Arduino code or hardware, I should in theory still have control of the surfaces and be able to glide the aircraft down safely. All of this is powered by a lithium polymer battery, which is connected via a 5 volt 5 amp BEC regulator, as well as going directly to the electronic speed controllers for the motors. Oh, and I chucked in a capacitor just for fun. Well, really because the Arduino requires a smooth 5 volt supply, or it resets itself, and I'll show an example of that in a bit. I then mounted the flight controller and Arduino onto a prototype PCB board which kept everything compact and also allowed me to wire all the controls for the wing into a single connector, which will also make it easy to remove the wing for transport. A quick test of the flight controller corrections to confirm the mixing works and it was time for some test hops. At first it was quite nose heavy and this aircraft is very sensitive to where the centre of gravity is. And as this is the smallest battery I have, I ended up adding 15 grams of lead to the tail to balance it out. That's not a good start. <laughs> I then found that the motors weren't perfectly aligned on the carbon spar and therefore the aircraft was always turning to the right. A few adjustments of the motor mount solved it, but then I realised the PID values in the flight controller needed adjusting. Everything seemed to be tuned well, and then... That's why I needed to add the capacitor into the previous wiring diagram. Luckily it wasn't travelling at 30 miles per hour 100 foot in the air. Anyway, it was time for the maiden flight. Right, so I'm out here on this very nice calm morning with the sun shining. And uh, it's time for the main flight of this VTOL. So I think the wind's coming towards me from this direction. So let's turn the plane around. Check all the controls. So elevator, aileron, and obviously no rudder on this, and throttle. Right, I'm quite nervous. Let's go. All right. That's easy. Right, so I obviously don't have your control because right now it's 
sort of a bit all over the place. Let's see if I can get it to turn back round to us. All right, there we go. So I'm currently just in hover mode. I'm trying to keep a slight forward speed just so that it always has a bit of elevator control. And I believe the motors might need adjusting because it's always turning to the left. You know, they're mounted on that single carbon shaft. I think one of the motors must be twisted or something. If you have a look, it's always naturally slowly turning to the left. Let's bring it back round. Again, this is still always in hover mode, but I can pick up a bit of speed. So let's uh, get some more forward speed. See if we can transition. I might get some altitude as well. Now let's transition to, this is like uh, half forward flight mode. So the motors are now at 45 degrees. Let's flick it into normal forward flight mode now. All right, so there we go. That is fully lifting by the wings now. What I'm going to do is bring this over behind me. Sorry, this is probably quite bad for the camera because I'm flying so far away. I'm going to bring this over behind me so I can bring it in for an approach. Flick it into hover mode. <laughs> yeah, this plane is not very easy to fly. I'll tell you what though, just hovering it around like this, you don't really need your control. Right, let's do another transition to slow forward flight. That was a close one. <laughs> close to the camera, I meant, not to the floor, where it was quite close. <laughs> I don't know how long the battery is going to last, but I'm not using much power. What I am enjoying about this plane, just from the short flight, is that it really does have a lot of lift. I'm only using about 20, 25% throttle. And it's, I mean, that's full horizontal motor to mode. Oh, that was close. That was just the, I think I need to add some uh, expo control to the roll because I, I'm over correcting a lot. All right, let's bring it in for a landing. Probably need to replace the battery and then uh, we'll adjust some of the controls. So that's still full forward flight mode. Let's turn it round and bring it into hover mode. <laughs> okay, that was a bit of a dodgy transition. <laughs> that was a bit of a rubbish transition because I, I wanted to get it stopped quite close to me. Bring it round. Try and perform a nice landing, Tom. Into the wind. And... Not bad. Oh, right, my hands are absolutely freezing right now. Um, I'm happy with the way that flies. The roll control is... Yeah, I've probably got quite a lot of aileron travel there. So I think I might adjust that a little bit. The elevator has a lot of travel, but it's not too sensitive. Cool, right. Gonna go grab another battery from inside and warm up my hands a little bit. After that, I then spent a bit of time tuning the gyro values as well as the control rate and practice flying the plane a bit more. After a few flights, I really started to enjoy flying it and was able to consistently take off and land on the spot.
So there we have it, the vertical takeoff radio control plane version 4 is now complete. I'm really happy with the way it performs, it's much better than the version 3 plane, obviously being nearly half the weight of the version 3 vertical takeoff plane, and also having a lot lower uh, rotational inertia because it doesn't have the huge uh, tilt mechanisms on the wingtips. Also the lightweight carbon spar at the tail really helps with the pitch control. Uh, I've made a few modifications since the maiden flight. Uh, I've made the tail elevator control just a regular flap. Uh, before it was sort of like this, where the whole thing would move. And for some reason this uh, will cause some weird unpredictable tendencies where I would pitch up, not realise I wasn't going fast enough, and the wing would stall and almost roll over, uh, which you probably saw in the maiden flight when I nearly hit the ground. I mean, that's full horizontal motor to mode. Oh, that was close. Now moving on to arguably the most important part of this plane, the flight controller and Arduino mixing code. About a month to a month and a half ago, I didn't even know how to write Arduino code, so to get this to work is really, really satisfying for me. I didn't even know what interrupt pins were or that you needed them to read PWM signals. Now I'm sure there's some of you Arduino guys out there where this code makes complete sense and probably looks super simple, and I'm sure there's some guys out there which have never done coding at all. However, for me, it's a pretty satisfying job to configure this code and actually see the plane fly. Now, ideally, it would be nice to have this code integrated into a proper flight controller, a more modern flight controller than the old KK2 board. Um, however, I'm not really sure how to write that kind of code. I'm not even sure what kind of code those flight controllers take. Um, seeing as I've only just learned Arduino, I'm not really uh, willing to delve into that uh, coding sector yet. However, if there's any guys out there that know how to write code for these flight controllers and would like to uh, utilize the method of mixing the channels that I've uh, used for this, then obviously you can find out my code. I'll be posting it on GitHub, hopefully. I also mentioned last week that I'll be posting the STL 3D printer files for this plane on Thingiverse. However, I do need to put a small disclaimer out there. This plane is very difficult to fly and very difficult to set up. Um, if you're new to radio control planes, do not build this plane. Uh, you will need to be able to fly either a model helicopter or a drone in rate mode, so it doesn't self-level. Uh, this plane can't self-level itself. Uh, the pitch axis doesn't seem to work like that. I tried self-level on my old version 3 plane and it crashed. So uh, yeah, it won't self-level itself like the drones you buy in the shops. Um, and obviously you'll need to be able to fly a ready control plane. So enough of that quick little rant. Um, I just wanted to put this disclaimer out there before um, lots of you go out and buy parts for this plane and then can't obviously set it up and then fly it. Uh, this video contains all the information you should need as an advanced modeler to build this plane. Uh, so if some of the things don't make sense, like when I set up the iNav software or just simply flashing the Arduino, if that doesn't make sense to you, then please do not build this plane. Sorry to end on a bit of a negative note like that, but I just want to make it clear that there's a reason why not many people have built vertical takeoff and landing ready control planes in the past. Um, but if you're an advanced modeler and you know how to tune PRD values, uh, work with flight controllers, uh, know what SBUS, PPM and PWM is, know how to flash Arduino code and also can solder, uh, then please feel free to use my uh, 3D printer files. I'll be posting a link to Thingiverse in the description below. Uh, hopefully also posting the Arduino code to GitHub. For the remaining 99% of you that watched this video for entertainment purposes only, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, it would be great if you could leave a thumbs up. And also, if you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really make these videos possible, and I honestly couldn't go through the time and effort to build such a plane uh, and write such code and then upload it online for free without your support. So if you enjoyed my videos, it'd be great if you could support me on Patreon. Thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Pssh.